I don't know. Oh look, there I am in the mirror. You're famous now. Strap for protection. This is what I do every day. I'm doing a horrible job filming. You look really pretty today. Action, baby. Action. All right, this needs to go up just a smidge. So you can see my phone. Action. What's up, you guys? What's poppin'? What's Gucci? Gang, gang. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me back for another update video. It is officially six weeks out of surgery to the day. So I thought I would give you guys an update. So here we are, giving an update. So I just wanna start out by saying thank you to everyone that reached out to me since my last video. The video of me completely breaking down sorry about that but everybody that reached out to me thank you very much uh you are the reason that i have a smile on my face today and why this week is a lot better than last because of all your kind words and everybody supporting me and me feeling a little bit less alone so thank you guys very much so rehab wise not a lot has changed I am currently still non-weight bearing and I can't do any strengthening. So it's pretty much just range of motion right now. So I will insert here what I've been doing for the last week since my last update, I guess two weeks. And I will walk you guys through it. But like I said, not a whole lot has changed. I think I've added two or three exercises and then just continuing to do the rest. For those of you that aren't going through this or planning to go through this, you could just skip ahead through this to this timestamp. And if you are going through this rehab or planning to go through the same rehab, take a look at what I'm doing and maybe you can add some of those exercises into your protocol, your therapy plan if you don't already have them. What's up you guys? All right, so. Here I am just rolling my foot out. I do this before every rehab session. I do this before every training. I do this multiple times every single day. Uh, it is just a great soft tissue release to start from your feet and work all the way up your body. So that's what you'll see for the first half of this video. I'm just doing a foot rollout on a lacrosse ball. Um, you can see I stop in some parts and kind of try to like spread out my toes and flex or extend my foot and that's pretty much just doing like pressure point release then I massage the top of my foot uh, in between those little bones where it hurts where it feels tight and I do this uh, every day it really just helps the swelling and stuff and the pain in the top of my foot and then I just uh, here I just flipped over and did it more because I was home alone but it is a lot easier when Kate does this for me. But I basically am just laying down, putting my foot up above my heart and pushing all of the swelling and the fluid back towards my heart. Um, Cause my toes and the top of my foot are where it gets the most swollen. So I basically wanna just push all of that inflammation back up through my ankle into my calf and get it pumping back through my bloodstream. So yeah, I spend a lot of time doing this every day. Mainly it helps, uh, I mean, it helps with everything. It helps with pain, it helps with mobility, it helps with healing. So, and then there you can see, I was just kind of like uh, moving kind of like the my like bones and just opening everything up, like doing lots of fascia and soft tissue releases. Here I am actually just like trying to bring sensation back to my foot and my toes. Like I said, they are probably the most painful part on my body at the moment. Uh, my toes just hurt incredibly bad. That's what keeps me up at night and what hurts if I like touch them to anything. Um, so I spend a lot of time doing that. And then I'm also just stretching both of my hips here because they both really need a lot of help. <laughs> 
And then I am getting into my toe swaps, I believe. Yep, so we're just gonna do that. I do that a lot. I'm getting pretty good at it. I'll pro it'll probably be phased out of my rehab here pretty soon. But yep, just uh, big toe and all the little toes opposite lifts. I find that the closer my heel gets to my body, so like the more bent my knee gets, the more difficult this becomes. So I try to do it at uh, all different angles. And like I said, I'm just gonna continue with that soft tissue release all the way up to the back of my head, the back of my neck. So here I'm doing my calf, which is the most painful part. You can see I can put both legs on top, or I can put my left leg on top of my right leg here and do the roller there with more pressure. And then for my left leg, I have to have both on the roller and more pressure is probably on my right leg just because my calf and my Achilles are so painful, super painful still. After a little bit of release, I'm trying to do some of my ankle pumps there because after I release, I have a lot more mobility. And then, like I said, just continuing up the body, I have lots of hamstring issues. So I do spend quite a bit of time there because I did tear my hamstring when I was playing in Israel. So I spend a lot of time working on my high hamstring where um, kind of like the tendon that inserts into my glutes. And then I will do my uh, glute release, so just roll on my glutes, which is always painful no matter what. <laughs> but yeah, I do this every single day, like it not it's not just rehab specific. I am a fiend for a roller. I love it. I think it's so important. Soft tissue work is so important. So here I am doing my back. I have like a really tight mid back, which actually doesn't give me issues like in my mid back. It gives me issues in my low back and my upper back, like my traps and stuff. So, but the, the actual tightness and, and area where I have uh, serious mobility issues is actually my mid back. So I basically just roll all around like my lumbar square and everything. And then I find the spot that really has, um, just a ton of tightness and I focus in there. So I basically try to not overextend my core and I try to keep my glutes on the ground and then I just really uh, dig into that spot. Here I'm doing a little bit child's pose stretch with some like stretching of the, my sides, my obliques, my lats. Like I am just incredibly tight from not being able to do any of this for a while when I'm typically really used to doing it. Um, so I'm just incredibly tight and, and, and wound up. But here I'm ending with my quads. I kind of always end with my quads. I like to just do my whole posterior chain and then I kind of end with my quads and then a little bit more stretching here. Um, but yeah, soft tissue is just so important. If you haven't ever read the TB12 method, I highly recommend it. Um, it is Tom Brady living proof, living and breathing proof that soft tissue therapy and manipulation and and giving love to our soft tissue um, health is so important for longevity and for uh, really just feeling good, to be really honest. <laughs> Here I'm doing a little bit more hip and glute stretching. And I believe I just pulled a steri strip off my ankle. <laughs> I hope I didn't. Um, and then here I'm doing some, I think I was trying to crack my back and then I ended up deciding I was gonna do some low back and again, oblique lat stretching. I just am a very, very tight person and it feels so like I just want to go do this watching this video to be honest with you all right finally we're getting into a little bit more specific for my ankle here I'm doing my favorite hamstring stretch of all time I don't know why this is my favorite um it just makes me feel like I avoid more injuries when I do this active stretching you can see I can't really straighten my left leg at all so I have a ton of work to do here but it is really important that I keep working on it um it is a lot worse than my right leg and then I go right into my glute activation and strengthening. So same thing here where I keep my toe on the ground, I engage my glute and squeeze as hard as I can. And then I raise my foot about a half of a foot off the ground and I hold that 
contraction for about three seconds and then I release. I'm way better at this on my right side than my left. As you can see here, I kind of have to like touch where I need to be activating on my left glute because it's like kind of dead and not listening. Uh, so when I touch it, it kind of helps my brain focus on the contraction. And then I am working on some hip strengthening here, some hip and, and glute strengthening, um, just like the isolated holds that I'm doing here where I fatigue so fast on my left side. It's actually crazy. And then I go right into my quad uh, leg raises. So basically I just contract my quad as hard as I can and raise my leg. This, to be honest, works my hip flexor more than my quad, but it is still good to get that quad contraction in. So I try to do this as much as possible, but you can see I am releasing down a lot faster than I should, but that's because of my hip flexors and their own separate issues. But if I do this correctly and enough, afterwards when I go into my squats, I have a lot of fatigue on my quads which which i like here i'm just gonna do a little baby stretch i guess and then i realized that probably wasn't a good idea <laughs> uh here i'm doing some glute bridges i actually haven't been like told or cleared to do these but they don't put my ankle in a compromised position and they don't hurt me so i figured it's okay to do it um i really like the fatigue that it brings to my glutes i am able to do like single leg on my right leg but i definitely have to do double leg with my left leg and my glutes need a lot of love, so I'm trying to do anything I can. Sorry, I'm also on my phone, but I'm listening to a podcast and I think that I needed to change it at this moment. Um, it's really important with these to make sure that your belly is tucked and your hips are tucked. You can see right there, I kind of tucked them. Uh, you don't want to be arched, arching your back and extending your belly. That will take the focus away from your glutes. And then next I went into this little kind of like homemade towel uh, scrunch. So I'm really just scrunching in a ace bandage and I have it on top of a chess board cover it looks like. I hate these, they hurt me and that's all I have to say about them. But I was, I got a little creative and I just decided to put that ace bandage right under the chess board and then I made my own little like wobbly board to do my, I don't know what this is called, but like front and back uh, mobility on. And it worked perfectly, to be honest. So I'm supposed to be like keeping that really steady. This whole video is sped up by about three times. So none of these exercises are as fast as they look. So keep that in mind. All of these should be done very slow and controlled. And then I go into my squats. So these are not super deep squats. My quad is already cramping. That is so funny. I'm like three squats in and my quad is cramping, you can see. So I've also not been cleared to do these, but uh, again, I'm not going very deep. I'm, as you can see, like barely even moving my ankle joint really. So just kind of sitting down standing up and I'm already cramping so bad. You can see I'm like trying to massage it out because it is just like nodding up, <laughs> I think. I think maybe 10 squats was enough for me and um, it's going to be a slow journey, but we're trying. And then I did a little quad stretching because of the quad cramps, obviously. The next thing you'll see is one of my new exercises. It's just towel slides. It's really similar to that uh, chessboard like front and back thing that you just saw but it's just a little bit of a different angle and um, a little bit more pressure. And I think I have some pretty good mobility here. I think I have better mobility going backwards towards my butt uh, and worse going forward. So I'm working on it. And then I did some more toe swaps and I pretty much do these a lot. I don't really know why, I think I just like it. And then uh, this is not part of my rehab and I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm about to do. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> but yeah, that is all my rehab and yeah, bye. Okay, so that is the rehab that I'm doing and the therapy that I'm doing. I always call it rehab 
because I'm like rehabilitating something, but a lot of people call it like PT. So, I mean, it is physical therapy, but I don't know. In my mind, it just like always comes out as rehab. Anyways, and then as you can see here, my range of motion of my left ankle compared to my right ankle is not too bad. It's like really coming along. I think a lot of the restriction in my range of motion actually comes from the muscles and and everything surrounding the ankle. It's it's like the, my Achilles, my calf, behind my knee and the bottom of my foot that are really restricting my range of motion rather than like the ankle itself. So that's good and bad. I mean, I obviously need to work on all those surrounding muscles, but the idea that my ankle isn't necessarily the thing that's like stopping me with my range of motion is promising to me. But yeah, in general, rehab is going good. Um, <laughs> I pretty much do rehab at night after work and I actually come in this room, it's pretty empty and we have like all the stuff set up and Cade comes in with me and he does like a little, I don't really know what he does, <laughs> workout and I do my rehab and it's actually really nice because it's given us more time to like bond and hang out and, and like have that quality time together because we don't really see each other much and the time that we do see each other we're usually working so we're not really like talking or spending like quality time together so when we work out in here together i mean not work out it's like rehab we can like talk and catch up and like actually have conversations so that's been really nice and a little like hidden silver lining of this whole thing i will insert a little video of us right here being really ridiculous the other night and and if anybody knows what Kate is doing in this clip please let me know in the comments below because i still really have no idea consciousness been telling on me you got none i got hell on me I was low and they was bailing on me, selling on me. All right, another thing that I wanted to update everyone on is this. That's right, baby. This ice pack has been life changing. So I've had it for, I think, two weeks now. It has made all the difference in icing. Like, literally, I ice like three times a day now. And it's so quick and easy. And it's so perfect. I can't even put into words how great it is. I'll put a clip in right here of how I put it on and how easy it is and everything. And yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so I finally got in my ice pack for my ankle. It is like incredibly hard to ice your ankle if you can't submerge it into like an ice bath or something because like the ice chunks will like hurt it and not really form very well around the ankle because it's so like bendy and there's so many different like bones and stuff so it's really hard to ice it so this finally came i ordered this a while ago and it's finally here and i've used it like a hundred times a day ever since i got it and i'm icing so much better now so definitely try to order one of these this is what the box looks like um i ordered it on amazon though so i will link it down below if it is still available it is called the relief expert gel ice pack for foot and ankle so i'm going to show you guys how it works it is so so good because it stays um pliable and like soft so you can wrap it really tight and it doesn't hurt and then on the inside it's like uh what's this word fuzzy and comfy on the inside it's like fuzzy and so it's really nice like on your skin however i haven't been putting it directly on my skin which you can but i haven't been because i have like open wounds and they say um and they say not to do that and my skin is all like messed up and so yeah i'm trying not to put it directly on it so i just pop this sock on And then this is super easy. So it's almost like a brace. You just step right into it and you just wrap it right around and you can wrap it really tight and get like a compression aspect too, which I love. And then also it ices your foot, which is so important. Um, because my foot has been getting more swollen than my ankle, honestly. So it's on there nice and tight. And then I leave this on for, 
I've been leaving it on for like 30 minutes. It does start to get less cold after like 20, but I've been leaving it on for 30 just because it feels so good when it's on. Like it doesn't hurt, my ankle doesn't hurt anymore when it's on, so I love it. Anyways, yeah, so it's, and it's super secure, so I can like run around on my scooter with it and not worry about getting ice everywhere or it falling off. Peace out. So yeah, if you have this surgery, definitely get this before the surgery so that you have it right when your cast comes off and when you get into the boot, you can ice all the time. Game changer. Okay, so my incision location, let's talk about it. It has been getting increasingly aggravated and irritated, like the skin around the actual scab area is like red and my scabs are falling off, but not like falling off because they should be falling off and then bleeding. So they're like ruining all my socks. I'm getting pissed off because if you know my sock game, you know I'm getting pissed off. And, and I think it's because I've been walking more. So like when I'm in the boot, the inside of my ankle like rubs on the like bar in the boot and it kind of hurts. And I just hadn't been walking in my boot enough to realize, but now that I'm walking more like for work and I finally like went to the grocery store by myself and all that kind of stuff, I'll insert a little photo here. And if you don't like, like kind of gross photos, then probably just don't look for like two seconds. Okay. Okay, welcome back. So showering is getting a lot better. I used to have like come out of the shower with a really swollen, irritated foot, but the skin on my foot and ankle is getting way less dry and it's way less irritated. I've been exfoliating and putting lotion on every day. So it's pretty much back to normal. So my foot doesn't sting when the hot water hits it. It doesn't get as swollen because I have my stool, which is another thing you have to get. It's such a game changer. So now that I don't have to stand up, the whole shower and even though like even though i'm not putting that much weight on my foot and most of it is on my right side i'm still having like that tiny bit of weight on my left side and it makes my foot super swollen by the end of the shower so i was like dreading showering actually i can't i don't know if you guys can see i'm having like severe dry scalp like severe like you know when your scalp gets sunburned and it just like peels off that's what mine is like everywhere and I think it's because I wasn't showering enough, so I wasn't like getting off the dead skin, but I really don't know. It's also dry here, so I need to like try to shower like at least every other day because I was avoiding it so much. I, for the last six weeks, I've showered once a week. So, I'm a stinky girl, just kidding. But yeah, I, I would def definitely recommend the stool because it just makes everything so much easier and it, it makes it, far more desirable to shower, <laughs> knowing that you're maybe not gonna have like a lot of pain while you're doing it. So I was asked to prove or post a video that I was indeed walking, and I didn't really have any clips of me walking in my boot because I'm usually like behind the camera, I'm not really like, nobody's really filming me all the time. So I did get this footage right here. Boom. So yeah, that is me walking in a brute. It's true what they say. The rumors are true. I am walking. Anyways, that's me walking in a boot at Target. <laughs> in my really cool sweater that I didn't end up getting because I have too many Christmas sweaters and it wasn't allowed. Oh, also, shout out Shroot Farms and Dwight and The Office and all my homies over there. If you know, you know. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. It literally means nothing. I'm just a fan. Send help. Couple more things. I'm doing a lot better overall, like mentally and just realizing like, let's just keep grinding and get through this so that it can kind of all be in the past and we can, and I can be better and all that kind of stuff. But I still have like my rough days. So it's Friday, the 20th. And on Monday, I had a rough day. I had a really long day at work, a really stressful day. It was like one of those days where like nothing goes right and by the end of the day, you're like, I didn't get anything done because I was just putting out fires all day and like trying stuff and failing and it was just, 
a very emotional day for me and it just it just sucked and I get home and I walk into this room and I, I I'm like all kind of flustered and I just decide just get your rehab done right now or else you're not gonna do it at all. So I normally get home, take my boot off and go ride onto the scooter because I don't like to walk around in the boot because like I said, it irritates my scars or my incisions. So I that's usually my like every single day, just sit down right when I get in, don't go in any room or anything, just in the living room and take off my boot and get on the scooter. Well, I was like, in such a fluster kind of and just like frustrated that I came straight into this room where I do rehab and I just told myself like do it right away or else you're not gonna do it so I just came straight in here with my boot sat down and as I was sitting down I noticed something like a big black glop on the ground on the carpet and I was like what is that and I like looked around and then I noticed on my boot my walking boot that there was like a big something of black nonsense and I think it ended up being tar so I got tar on my boot at the work site and didn't realize came in got it all over the carpet it's still there and so I ripped my boot off and I started like tearing up because I was just so frustrated I don't even know really where it came from you know it's just like a little thing it's not that big of a deal but I get all frustrated and so I don't have my scooter in here because I walked in here so I take my, rip my boot off, hold it in my hand, and I hop across my apartment and to the bathroom to wash my boot off. Then I wash my boot off, and I'm like so pissed off, I'm just like irritated, and I hop over my scooter, which is facing the wrong way, like it's facing like as if I went into the room instead of like where how I want to go out. And so I hop over to my scooter and I'm just like really frantic and I just like rip it up. So I'm like all, all my weight's on my one leg and I just like pick up my scooter and try to like spin it around like a wheelie, you know? And I just completely like pulled too hard, lost balance. And I started tipping over like into like this small dresser, but over the left side. So like my only option was to put my foot down or just like fall. And so I just kind of like took it and fell and I just like scraped up my arm and my ankle got like caught in between the wheel and the, the body of the scooter. And I like, <laughs> I couldn't tell how bad it was cause like I don't have great feeling of my ankle. It felt so bad. Like, I don't know if it was just like the impact cause it's a week later and it doesn't feel like it was like injured in any way but in the moment it felt so bad and it hurt so bad and I just started like bawling and no one was home so I was just like so upset by myself and I was like oh great I ruined my ankle like I ruined my ankle because I can't control my emotions and nothing really even happened like you had a bad day it happens to all of us and I was just so upset with myself. I ended up icing my ankle for like two hours and then being able to do my rehab in the end. <sighs> but the lesson to be learned here is don't let your emotions get the best of you. Like things happen, you just have to take the punches and roll with it. It's exactly what's going on in our world today. There's a lot going on that we can't control and like getting our emotions all worked up about it and, and getting upset and letting it take like energy from us and letting it affect our attitude and our decision making and all that kind of stuff is just like an uphill battle that will never end. So it's okay to feel emotions and ex and acknowledge them, but when they when you let them affect your actions and your mindset and your happiness and all that kind of stuff is when they can be dangerous. So I let my emotions just get way too involved in what I was doing. And I could have easily hurt myself really bad and been looking back on this and like regretting it so much. So it was a learning experience for me, you know, like it was a mistake, but I can learn from it. And I, I now know like a simple little inconvenience that happens in my day isn't big enough to ruin an entire surgery that I've dedicated a year to, so. Enough on that, but hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes and keep those emotions in check. You know what I mean? Okay, also that was a backward Z. Like I feel like I, I don't really know how cameras work, but I feel like that was for you guys. Like.
I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. So overall, things are progressing as they should according to the according to the PTs. They said that everything is good. Uh, there are a couple things holding me back and I am working on them. So those things are the tightness on the bottom of my foot, my Achilles, my calf, and behind my knee. So I need to work on basically like my flexibility there. Um, I guess mobility, flexibility, it's kind of, it's not like flexibility, it's like my motion that I need to get back, so mobility. And then, well, maybe not, maybe it is flexibility. Is mobility just for joints and flexibility for muscles? I don't know, I should know that, I'm embarrassed. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is when I do my ankle pumps, like up and down, after I'm up and I go down, there's like a catching feeling and it hurts and I can't really go very far until it like cracks. And then when it cracks, I have like a lot of mobility. So I'm trying to figure out kind of how to get rid of that. And basically just like doing it more often seems to be helping. And third, last, but certainly not least, is the swelling in my foot anytime that it is below my heart. I'm getting more swelling than they say I probably should at six weeks out, so I'm gonna work on that. And I don't really know how, other than I'm gonna eat more of an anti-inflammatory diet if I can, and then, dang, I was like all up in your grill this whole time. Let me chill. Take a chill pill. So I'm gonna work on that by eating an uh, anti-inflammatory diet as much as possible, maybe drinking more fluids to like get things moving, keeping my foot pumping and moving throughout the day, keeping a warm sock on it so it doesn't get too cold, um, keeping it elevated more, keeping it wrapped when it's down, and icing more. Those are my plans. I think that's all I have for you today. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your support and not canceling me for crying online. I don't think it will be the last time that it happens, but hopefully the last time for a while. I just spit. I feel like whenever I film, I have a spitting problem or like a mouth le leakage problem. Cause I'm always like, but like in my normal life, I don't really feel like I have that. Help, help me, somebody help me. Anyways, I hope you guys like my shirt and my nails that are all breaking, which is super cool because they're my real nails and they're breaking like at the freaking cuticle. And why well, am I out of breath from literally standing up once? Yeah, they don't squeeze. Okay. All right. You guys don't give a shit. Oh my gosh. It's not good. A lot of things fell, but the important thing didn't. I literally caught that with my fingertips. Let me just show you guys what did fall, what this contraption was on. This is what did fall. And that is not a good sight, but I saved the goods. So don't worry. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Look at how my winged liner doesn't match. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. All right. That is all for today, you guys. I'm being obnoxious and a little bit extra. David, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at that. What do you guys think? David, David, oh my God, David. Cast me for the spinoff for Alexis Rose. David, David. Yeah, she's high pitched voice. It just depends, you know, if like he's far and I'm calling him like, David. But if it's like, David. Oh my God, David. Ew, David. <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm gonna go out on that. Peace. Oh, I was supposed to say like, thanks for watching and stuff. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all more than you know. Comment below with anything that you want to say to me because I read them because I only get like two or three or one or zero. So, you know, I'll read it. And subscribe and hit the notification bell and like. I miss our old dances. All this TikTok crap. Like, are you guys with me on this? 
Like, can we go back to the old dances that were, like, swaggy, like, Dougie, and anything else? Nene? Like, everything now is, like, not... I mean, how is TikTok even a thing? It's, like, so uncool. Like, I mean, I don't even know. I guess, like, the woe, or, you know, they hit the woe. What else do they do on TikTok? They do, like, a couple cool, like, pop dances, or, like, hip-hops and stuff, but, like... For the most part, like, the TikTok dances that are, like, from the waist up, which, that's already a problem. Like, it's not a dance. It's, like, a hand gesture. But, like, what is... I don't even know a TikTok dance. Oh, like... Dun, 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 dun. What? That's not cool. Help me understand. Because I want to... Uh, 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 uh. Okay, that wasn't cool either. That's why. It's because all these, all these people out here with no rhythm and the inability to dance good or well, I think is how you say it, they were like, well, what are we going to do? We're not very cool. And we can't really fit in with, like, the culture. So what do we do? Oh, I know. Let's freaking make up these really lame dances that anyone can do and do them. It's a shame. It's a shame. Anyways, peace.